throwing the Alabama rig. This is actually the Alabama rig that's made by Mans. Um, we have several different versions out on the market now. Um, we're just trying this one out. We've tried a lot of the different ones and we're kind of getting a feel now for what we like and don't like about the different umbrella rigs. Um, the umbrella rig's been around for a long time. I mean, they've been throwing it for stripers out in salt water and, and uh, lakes that have those large stripers. They've been trolling for them with them forever. Andy Poss with the, with the Alabama rig, he kind of made a version here that you can actually cast and fish with. And even casting umbrella rigs have been around for a while, but I know a lot of the striper guys on Beaver Lake and Cumberland, places like that have used them forever. But what's unique about Andy's, he put this fish head in the front of it and it's got five wires coming out of the back of it kind of angled. And uh, basically it just represents a school of bait fish, you know, a little pot of bait fish that have broken off from the big school. And uh, I think what I've told people, and people ask me why it's so successful, I think for me what I've determined is it's the same exact allure that you have with those big trout swim baits out in California. That's a big meal that those bass are used to eating out there in those lakes. Here, they're used to eating shad and uh, bait fish like that and minnows of that nature. And so you put five big shad on a rig like this and it's a huge dinner swimming by that's easy for them to grab a hold of. And uh, I think that's what the appeal of it is. I mean, it puts out, it moves a bunch of water. It puts out a lot of flash. You got a lot of baits down there moving in the water. So you got, a, you got five baits that give off a big profile in the water. The key to this though is, is throwing it with the right tackle. I mean, a couple problems we'll run into if people throw it on too light a line is we're gonna have Alabama rigs laying all over the bottom of the lake. My partner Chad and I, the last few months, Chad's caught three of these rigs now that weren't attached to his line. So I see that as being a problem. That's just from people throwing it on tackle that's too light. Um, we fish with 65 pound braid Occasionally we'll go down to 25 pound mono um, if the water's real clear in the area we're fishing. Um, heavy, heavy rod. I'm throwing this on a Dobbins uh, swim bait rod, the 795 swim bait MP, MT. Um, this is an eight foot rod. What you want, I mean, musky guys have been throwing three and four and five ounce baits for years. And uh, the, what you run into when you try to throw this like on a medium heavy action rod, when you pull this rig out of the water, I mean, you got more than an ounce. Depending on what size jig head you use, these jig heads, I mean, these are just eighth ounce jig heads on here, but you put the rig, the jig heads, the weight of the swim baits, all that on there, you could have two or three, four ounces on here. The problem you run into is when you load back, this rod loads back, your wrist and tendons and all that, you're gonna tear that up because there's just too much weight right here when it shifts forward. What you need is a long rod that you can build a fulcrum with. You want a pivot point and you can throw the rod and that's how those musky guys have been doing it for years. They got a strong rod with a lot of backbone, good length. So when that, road, when that rod loads back, you go to throw it, you can pivot the rod with, your, with two hands and take some of that torque off of your wrists. You know, I pull that rod back by the butt push it forward like this, then my wrist isn't doing all the work to try to hold that weight as the rod loads behind me. So your tackle is probably as important as the rig itself. Um, you know, you'll get this bait hung. If you're fishing in the right places, I mean, we found that slow is better. Um, we reel this as slow as we can. We've caught a lot of fish out of brush piles and different pieces of cover. The deal is, I mean, it's going to get hung in places, but if you'll just not set into the cover, you can generally just take your boat up there, get on the back side of it, wiggle it. It's got so much weight on those other baits, it'll knock itself free of just about everything. So if you don't go to jerking on it and swinging on it, you can get it back just about every rig that gets caught. I've been throwing them for three months now. I think I've only lost one. So you'll just take your time with that. But um, the other piece of it is, is how the fish, how, how the bites usually go. And, Obviously, if you fished at all, you know not every fish bites exactly the same way, but for the most part, what you're going to feel on this deal is you may feel them come up and pop it and jar your rod, and I mean, the strikes are violent. The deal is it's just like frog fishing. You can't jerk on that violent strike. That's not the deal. It's not as soon as you feel one bump it, you know, swing as hard as you can and try to stab them, you know. Normally, what they do when they come up there crashing through it is they're trying to kill some of them baits. They're going to come up and roll on it and try to kill those baits. 
When one comes up in that rig and gets it, you're just going to feel the weight. You'll feel it jar, and then it's just going to start pulling your rod back. It's going to load up, and that's when I, all I do is lean into them. You don't have to get crazy and set the hook like mad. And actually, we found it's better if you don't set the hook and start wrenching on them like crazy because if you'll take and throw one jars it and then he loads up and you hook and then just start slowly working on him. A lot of times you get those following fish and they'll come grab the other baits that are swinging around back there that he's not hooked on. So it's actually, we found it's, it's better to actually fight them a little bit slower because you got that chance of doubling or tripling up on the rig. So one thing we found, obviously when you've got five swim baits hanging off the rig, it can be cumbersome to put in a rod locker and to keep up with. Um, what I found, we've got these little wraps that we got from Jim and I, you know, just regular old bait wraps, just Velcro wraps. Take and hook one bait on the hook hanger, then wrap the other ones up. It'll slide right in the rod locker without getting stuck on anything. And then, of course, a rod glove can take and push the wires down on the rig itself, keep everything covered up. So that makes it real easy to store these things whenever you're ready to fish. And basically all you got to do is get those two get your hook hanger undone you're ready to go. And then the, the last thing people always seem to ask about the Alabama rig, um, where to throw it? Where do I throw the rig? And I mean, that's a good question. Obviously, what we found and what most others have found is, and in this, what Andy Poss said when he created the Alabama rig is, you know, it's a suspending fish tool is what it is. And that's why we're catching some of these fish we've never caught before because it's a way to present baits to those suspending fish. And, you know, what we're doing, we basically think we know where the fish are suspended or we see them on our graph and then we count the baits down to that level and then just basically start in on a slow retrieve and uh, I'll give it a quick couple of turns to kind of get the baits to flare back behind the rig and get it kind of straightened out and then it's just a, a steady easy retrieve uh, nothing fancy not too much jerking or popping and and uh, like I said you know you just you wait for the rod to basically load up before you lean into them. So that's part one of our castable umbrella rig video. Hope you enjoyed it. because he's got a bucket mouth. Wow. <laughs> I just want to tell you, I've been slaying the wall out lately. That is so hot. Ever bump the stump? Suffix 832, the line that changes the game.